What's up friends of the good mood, this is Money and welcome to episode 2 of those Vega Conflict Auto Farming Fleet Tutorials. Episode 1 was covering the tier 1 blueprints, especially the Hydra Missa, which we are going to use now in order to take on the tier 2 and get ourselves the Gladius Driver, which is one of the most important farming weapons and also being used in PvP quite often. My focus with all of these videos is to get you to a running, working auto fleet for a certain tier level as fast as possible, okay? Uh, there are many ways to improve it later and I will give you a few uh, examples also where the focus lies on the quickest way with the least amount of tech. Before we start, in my last episode I made a little mistake when it comes to the module requirements for certain research, okay? That mistake won't happen this time. And here we are in the blueprint section of the game and you can see here tier 1, which you should really have all by now because of the farming fleet from episode 1. And uh, the Hydra missile is what we are going to use in order to farm the level 27 cargo fleets uh, from tier 2 in order to get, most importantly, the Gladius driver, okay? The Destiny Cruiser is also an interesting Vega ship and the Typing Cutter is going to be one of your most beloved of it ships in the future but you will not be able to use it immediately when you got it because it requires tech uh, tier 9 ship factory and ship lab okay or level 9 and uh, the thermal beams are one of the most important and powerful rushing weapons uh, that you can get from blueprints and the hydra missile 2 it's not as important as hydra missile 1 because the weight gets up a lot while the damage gets only a little buff okay so this is our focus and let's get going same as last time, we're going to use the tag function, okay? We find ourselves a level 27 cargo fleet by clicking this button here. If you don't have it yet, you need to find one manually and then click the button, the button tag down there. From this point on, you will be able to find the fleet um, by clicking this button. So you don't have to scroll around all the way in order to find it, okay? Um, if it was the regular farming, then you would just click like this and that's it. And then you would search for the next fleet and look for the next 27 fleet and uh, farm it. And you don't even have to join the combat, okay? But because of the fact that I want to show you, or because I want to show you how the combat will look like, uh, I'm going to engage the battle here and join it and have it on auto mode, which basically has the same effect as if you would not even join the battle, okay? You can see here we're using now one Harrier Frigate on, mar on slot 1, serving as a decoil and uh, soaking up a lot of damage coming from this Exodus Cruiser. And then we have those two, uh, those three Hydra Missile Rancor Battleships taking out the ships very quickly then. Um, all of these ships have a free instant repair, but uh, that decoy is necessary in order to dodge a few of those projectile shots and also, um, well, basically to occupy that Exodus Cruiser for a while uh, until, um, yeah so that the Rancor battleships can take it out. This is basically how most of the combats will look like. Sometimes you will lose one Rancor battleship or so, but it doesn't matter because, like I said, all of them are instant free repair afterwards. You can see here um, we got the fleet and don't get confused by the amount of resources I get here, to, uh, 1 million. You won't be getting that much, it's just right now Vega Conflict uh, has a little modifier for resources. We get a little bit more at this specific time right now. This won't be the case when you play the game probably, okay? After that um, you will see the fleet is red and this button appears here. That means the fleet is idle, it's not doing anything so you can send it home. Also, if you're in the base like this, you will see, oh, it's home, it's done here. You can recall it by clicking the button down here. And uh, you can see a countdown here. It's the time when it warps in your base and then it's in the base. And this is how the fleet repair will look like. And we have a nine minute repair in this case, 53 seconds too. And we just remove as many ships as necessary in order to get a free instant repair to the right. Now it's free instant repair, we click that. Then we put back in one ship free instant repair and we put back in the last ship the Harrier Frigate free instant repair and that's how you do it. Of course you use multiple ones of those fleets, you don't, leave, you don't just use one of them, you use like four, five of them and operate them all at the same time and that's how you get the blueprints insanely quickly and also fill up your resources very quickly. Alright, here we are in my popular documents that I always do and you can see here this is the tier 2 blueprint auto farming fleet, low level tech. I cannot say regular research tech only because now we're using the Hydra missile blueprint as you can see here. It's a requirement now, uh, but you should really have that by now as I told you already. Here we have, have one Harrier frigate and three Rancor battleships, okay? The Harrier fitting is as followed, Spectra shield level 2, Play Steel armor level 2, Rail driver level 2, two times. It's a lot of twos in here. <laughs> then we have the Rancor battleship, um, three times all the same fitted with shock shield, uh, shock wave shield level two, basic cargo level three twice, blade steel armor one, and hydra missiles one 
four times, okay? Quick side information for all these farming episodes, also the previous one and the next one and this one, okay? If you happen to have by any chance the Meta Face Shield level 1, which is an event or riot blueprint item, okay? You have to farm that at certain times. If you do have that, use it. If not, no problem, use the ones I told you about in this document right there. But um, if you have it, use it, it's better in every single way. You can and should, if you have higher tech later, equip higher basic cargo. Uh, I was using, um, or in fact, I think I am currently using, yep, you can see here, I'm using cargo, basic cargo level 5. This also works, okay? Um, this is not a problem I would advise you to, as soon as you can get your hands on a higher cargo, to put it in there, because this fleet can basically also serve you as a cargo hauler fleet. Just having a free instant repair and can carry up to 5 million resources later if you have this entire fleet full with battleships that can store or have basic cargo level 5 in there. Of course this will require higher module upgrades but once you have them at some point then you should really equip it. Okay, fleet characteristics is you build this fleet in below 8 hours and an individual ship repair is below 5 minutes so free instant repair. It collects 484 thousand resources with those four ships currently okay that's how uh, and with basic cargo level three you get almost 500,000 resources then the module requirements are bridge level three fleet bay level six ship factory level five ship lab level five uh, tech lab level four uh, you should actually have level six already because of the previous episode this one requires less tech in in this case and uh, arms lab level six then we have the research required. Obviously you need the blueprint for, for the Hydra Missa. Then you need the Harrier Frigate uh, research, the Rancor Battleship research, and the Scatter Missiles 1 and 2, which you should have already, the Hex Missile 1 and 2, which you should have already, and the Basic Cargo Level 3, which you should also have already from Episode Level 1. Uh, episode one. My advice here, okay, build yourself around five of those fleets and operate them all at the same time because that makes it a lot faster and more efficient in getting your blueprints. Use the tag function also as I showed you in order to find the fleets easily and uh, a new thing that I have not done in the previous episode here, important next steps, okay. Zero, uh, it's not even a step one, it's step zero, it's even coming below or before one, complete the Gladius driver blueprint, okay. After that, um, upgrade your fleet bay to level 7. I know it will require you 4 days and 19 hours around, but it will allow you to equip um, more ships to your uh, fleet because it will give you more maximum fleet mass so that you can actually fill here slot 5 and slot 6 um, with uh, the same rancor battleships that you have here and as you can see here step 2 is then putting the two extra ranks in those fleets and uh, step 3 is going to be for the gladius driver already upgrade your tech lab to level 5 because it takes 10 hours, but you will be able to then research the Iridium Magnets level 1 and 2, which is what you need in order to, uh, yeah, get yourself ready for the next uh, third episode of those auto farming tutorials that will use the Gladius driver later, okay? And then we have that little frequently asked questions part of this video. Does it work against higher level fleets in level 27? Probably not if you don't have the Rancor battleships on slot 5 and 6 also in the fleet. And does it work against antimatter and crafting fleets? Yes, against lower levels ones it will work, uh, but not against fleets that have level 23 or higher when it comes to antimatter or crafting. Just so you know guys, this document right here will be in the video description for you guys with the requirements and the detailed fitting and all that, so uh, you can look it up yourselves, okay? I make sure to link the previous episode that you can see here and the next episode to the video description once I have the next episode produced, okay? And they will also be in the video playlist as you can see here. It looks like this. Not only auto farming fleets but also how to take on bases with sniper fleets and all that, okay? So there's a lot of useful information in here. Now creating all those videos takes a lot of time, a lot of work and maybe you want to contribute something to my young channel on YouTube, then this is how you can do it. There's this Patreon page where you can see how many patrons we have, where we stand and what the next milestone goals for my channel are. In fact, on a little side note, the quality of the content you enjoy right now with this microphone, this webcam, the spotlights, the green screen back there, this all came from the people supporting me on Patreon. And if you want to be part of all this, you can do that here and to the right you can also see the rewards I came up with to thank you guys for your awesome support and all that. So um, yeah, give it a quick look and see if it interests you. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and comment down below. And if you haven't already, hit subscribe as brutal as a man can hit for more. Thanks for bearing with me. You guys are awesome. As always, Money Gaming signing off. Bye bye. <laughs>